Hello everyone, John Stigall here. Welcome to week five video presentation, FDR's Four Freedoms Translated to Diplomacy, sourced from America History and Life Database in the Jerry Falwell Library. FDR's 6 January 1941 Four Freedoms speech included a dialogue in which he announced the Lend-Lease Bill with Great Britain to Congress. This had a synergistic relationship with Roosevelt's concept of moving America from isolationism to international engagement against the Axis powers. He leveraged the Four Freedom Speech as a diplomatic and informational instrument of power, or IOP. This propelled America into what Charlemagne would have described as the world's paladin for democracy, the knight out in front leading. Roosevelt felt that one of the primary contributing factors to the First World War, and I, like many other historians, see World War I and World War II as the same conflict, timed out by a poorly thought out and implemented armistice in between. One of the primary factors was colonial imperialism. The rising Japanese militant aggression with their self-dubbed Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere was derived from Asian colonies being controlled by European influences and not an Asian influence. So the Japanese were simply trying to, in their justification, said, we are simply doing what you all in the West and Europe and the United States have done for decades and centuries. We are creating our own economic prosperity sphere by resource exploitation of territories we acquire through imperialism and colonialism. We are no different than you. Who are you to judge us, cut off our oil, you know, in 1922 Washington Naval Treaty, I'll limit the tonnage of capital ships that we can have. So FDR wanted through diplomacy, through four freedoms, Asian self-determination from those colonies, free from any imperial or colonial influence whether it be Asian or European. Finally, uh, FDR initiated the United States position for a state of Israel as early as 1945. And if you follow current events, obviously this has, as history plays forward, has significant implications. He met with Arab King Ibn Saud, uh, the Saud family founded Saudi Arabia. Uh, they had a lunch on board the cruiser USS Quincy CA-71, which was the personal vessel I used to ferry, I used to ferry Roosevelt around the world to various conferences. This was on the way to the to the uh, the uh, Yalta conference, 1945. So FDR socialized the idea of a homeland for European Jews. He was again, he was trying to use this diplomatic IOP or instrument of power uh, for European Jews that survived the Holocaust inside of mandated Palestine. Now, the area that became the state of Israel, now where the current Gaza Strip is, West Bank, that was all still considered mandated Palestine uh, from the Sykes-Picois Agreement of 1916, which was ultimately carried into the Treaty of Versailles. So King Saud uh, retorted with really zero hesitation during this luncheon on board the cruiser, that the, Ger the Christian Germans stole the Jewish lives homes, let the Christian Germans pay in terms of money and land. Saud concluded prophetically, he's like, the Arabs would rather die than yield any land to any Jews. I use three sources, again, from America History and Life Database. Peter Carlson, FDR Dines with King Ibn Saud, Robert Dalek, Franklin Roosevelt as World Leader, and Lee Namakas, the Committee to Defend America and the Debate Between Internationalists and Interventionists. Thank you.